The gearbox and differential are critical to the performance and design of a Formula One car. Unlike virtually all road cars, they're positioned right at the very back. The transmission designers face a number of very difficult challenges. First, let's take a look at the whole creation outside of the car. The gearbox must be strong enough to transmit the 900 horsepower from the latest V10 3-litre Formula One engines. It must also be small enough and narrow enough so as not to affect the aerodynamics at the back of the car. All of the suspension loads at the rear are transmitted into the gearbox casing and they can be immense, especially over bumps and big curbs. And all of that is going on just on the outside of the gearbox. But let's take a look at its primary function. This is the massively expensive and secretive world of a Formula One gearbox. There are seven forward gears and one reverse. The dark grey tube is called the barrel and twists in either direction to move the selector forks. One gear is released as the next is engaged. A shift takes less than 20 milliseconds and there are no synchromesh. The changes are literally forced through. Formula One engines give their best power at 19,000 revs, so the seven gear ratios are carefully chosen to keep the engine turning over fast, regardless of the road speed. You know what it's like when you try to pull away on your bicycle and you're in the wrong gear when your legs are the engine. Somewhere like Spa gives a great challenge. The gear ratios have to bridge the gap between the 40 mile an hour La Source hairpin and the flat out 190 mile an hour Blanchiment. So let's x-ray this lot to see how it works. Hmm, including me, it seems. Just look how inwardly happy I am to be sitting in a Formula One car. A driver instinctively knows when the engine is nearing maximum revs and therefore that a gear change is imminent. To fine tune that process, a series of lights are positioned at the top of the steering wheel in the field of vision. These can easily be tuned to the driver's preferences. Change up too early and acceleration will be dull too late and the engine will hit the rev limiter, wasting valuable lap time. The driver's mind coordinates what he's hearing along with the shift lights and his track position and decides to go for a gear shift. The command is sent to the appropriate finger. This human mechanical movement translates into an electrical impulse. A computer then decides the target gear. To change up, it also prepares a momentary cut of engine power. To change down, it checks first to avoid a potential engine overrev, flips the throttle and releases the clutch. This hydraulic unit receives those electrical messages and sends pressure to the clutch, throttle and gear shift. Now we are in the mechanical phase. This is the gear cluster and shift mechanism. The gear ratios are aligned on two shafts. Hydraulic pressure twists the barrel. This in turn moves the selector forks, which engage the desired gears. The clutch is a tiny unit about the size of a man's fist. The gearbox output shaft transfers the power to the differential, which turns the energy through 90 degrees. From there, two drive shafts distribute that energy into the rear hubs, to which the rear wheels are fixed using locating pegs and a large nut. And what a difference it makes for the driver. Instead of going into a corner, one hand on the wheel while declutching, braking and manually downshifting, he can now keep both hands firmly on the wheel and merely move a finger or two. Just compare these two driving styles. In this early 90s Benetton, my input is high as I operate the clutch and brake at the same time as blipping the throttle and shifting the gears, all while driving one-handed at 180 miles an hour. Now compare my driving in this modern Ferrari. It pampers me. My left foot brakes and my right foot only minds the throttle, like a cart. With both hands firmly on the wheel, 4,000 race gear shifts are easy. I can now focus totally on attacking the track. So no more blood pouring out of the palm of your hand where the gear knobs tried to wear its way through. No more skin knuckles where they didn't quite give you enough space in the cockpit for the manual shift. I'll leave you to make your own mind up whether the modern system for changing gear in Formula One is a good thing or not.